Welcome back, this is Yama Jack, and today we're going to do shopping spree, because why not? So I said we had the uh, the exterminator come in this morning. In one of the episodes, I think. I just went upstairs and had a bunch of cherry tomatoes, and now I've got a bit of a... Uh, bit of a burpiness going on. Um, so I said we had the, uh, the exterminator coming in this morning. They're apparently coming back on Thursday to, uh, like fog the house and apparently they don't need to do anything downstairs so the door can be closed locked whatever um, they only need to be upstairs because that's where the uh, the infestation is so I'm like okay cool um, how about we install a lock on the basement door um, so that they can't get in there because then we can put all of our valuables downstairs and they'll be safe right because like contractors Especially like exterminators where you can't be in the house. Like we have to be out of the house for six hours while this dude's basically got free roam of our house, able to do whatever he wants for the entire duration. Right? And and when you're a contractor, you can pull anything you want out. You can pull as many boxes out of the house as you want. Um, nobody's going to bat an eye at it, right? So, like probably nothing will happen, but I'm like, hey, I'll pay for the lock. We get a lock on the basement door, and then we don't have to worry about it, right? Like, it's just... That's it. You're done. Right? Um, wouldn't that be, like, a big thing? Like, just put a doorknob that has a little, like, thing on it, right? Like, they're, they're probably just not going to go downstairs. Um, if you just put a lock on it. Like, most people won't break through a lock. They could, right? Like, they could still, like, pick the lock or whatever in those six hours that they've, they've got. Um, but they probably won't, right? They'll probably just ignore it and because they, they, oh no, like they want to make sure that you don't even notice that stuff's gone until like long after, right? Um, so I'm like, okay, yeah, you put a lock on, don't have to worry about it. Put all your stuff downstairs, problem solved, right? There's, there's no concern. Um, and they're like, oh, well, I don't know. I trust this guy. He seems nice. Like, yeah, well... <laughs> You think they're just gonna come up to you like, uh, hey, yeah, so uh, you left me out of the house Thursday uh, for six hours while I strip you clean? I mean, clean your you out? I mean, um, remove all of the ants? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like no, they're gonna they're gonna be nice and charismatic, and uh, they're gonna take bits and bobs that people wouldn't notice um, necessarily missing. Um. For, for like a while and then you're like oh I don't know where that went and then it's not stolen it's missing right so like valuable video games for instance like I have a few video games worth in the like 600 700 dollar range like several video games um, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn I have that in like pretty good condition with the packaging and the case and like manual and all of that like it's in pretty good condition i take really good care of uh i did anyway take good care of my games these days i don't because they're all electronic and um there's no physical damage to be done i also can't resell them so you know my 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 the, my uh my net wealth doesn't go up as i uh as i age with steam games you know whereas with radiant dawn it's like 600 or 700 american which is like a thousand dollars canadian and it's just it's just sitting in a box, <laughs> right? I haven't played it in a while, but it's like worth a thousand Canadian dollars or something like that. Um, it's a, it, it wasn't they didn't sell very many of them because it was like on the last run of the the GameCube. I was super into Radiant uh, Path of uh, Fire Emblem at that point, and um, I made sure to buy it, so I have it, and it is a fantastic game, and it's worth a lot of money. I also have a uh, like a working N64, which are worth, I don't know, a little bit. Plus a bunch of N64 games in, like, pretty good condition. I have a ton of GameCube games. And GameCube games are worth, like, big money. Like, a, a good condition, manuals, all that. Like, they're worth big money. Like, I've got a box full of, of like, games. Like, a little, um... Like, one of those, like, bench things with a thing in it. What's that called? I can't remember. But I got one of those, and it's filled with probably like, I don't know, four or five thousand dollars worth of games. 
Like, if somebody came in and they took, like, four games out of that box, I wouldn't notice. Like, I don't look in it often enough, and I certainly don't look for each specific game often enough, right? So if somebody came into my room and took three or four games, that's that's easily, like, $1,500, $2,000 profit. I'm not even going to notice, right? Um, so maybe I should get, like, a lock on it, because <laughs> it is it is worth a lot of money. Uh, maybe, maybe I will get a lock on it. Um, but, like... You know, it's it's uh, it's a lot of value there, right? I'm like, I just I just want to have a lock downstairs. Just makes me more comfortable knowing that uh, there is at least some protection, keeping uh, these guys from like taking valuable stuff from me. I've got like a 3D printer with um, like still sealed um, plastic spool stuff. I mean, those those are worth a. a bit of money and, and easy to pocket, right? I mean, there's there's just... There's a lot of knicks, knickknacks and paddywhacks that, uh, that can be easily taken with, uh, with without anybody really noticing for, like, a few months, and then at that point it's not really the robber's problem anymore, right? So, I don't know. I'm a little bit concerned about it because we don't have the protection that I feel we should have um, for getting contracting work done because, like, it is... People get stolen from very commonly with uh, with this stuff, so I'm a, I'm a little bit concerned about it. But ultimately, um, the guy did seem nice. Uh, they do have good reviews. Um, it's probably fine. Like most contractors aren't going to steal from you. Um, it's just that when they do, um, you don't really notice, right? When they do it well, anyway. I mean, I'm sure a lot of contractors will like go in and like strip you clean. And then you come back home and your house is empty and you're like, oh, crap. But then you just, like, call the cops and then you get all your stuff back for the most part. Uh, and insurance covers you and all that. But, like, the thing is, is they could take, you know, a couple of things you don't even notice. Insurance isn't going to, like, be like, oh, yeah, that was stolen, you know. Because you, you can't even prove that it was, right? So, I don't know. I'm a little concerned. I'm gonna check all of uh, all of my stuff uh, when I get back. I'll just hope that um, it's all fine. It should be, but it's just like like just put a lock on the door, you know? Just get a lock on there. It's not 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 much work to just replace a doorknob with one that has a lock on it, <laughs> and it doesn't cost much, and it adds that extra layer of security. It's like why wouldn't you want it, you know? To me. It's just a, it's a no-brainer, but it's not my house. I don't own it. I don't get to make those decisions, and, uh, yeah. I mean, ultimately, I've got probably, like, ten, twenty thousand $20,000 worth of just stuff in my room, and, like, the downstairs suite in general. You know, computers, laptops, 3D printer, all of the games, game consoles, you know, old stuff, too, right? that's uh, really risen in value and really hard to get your hands on. Oh no, what? I was trapped by a stalker! Ugh. Like what? Ugh. I hate stalkers, man. I hate stalkers. We'll try that again, shopping spree again, because it is the, the daily, so I do want to get it done. Yeah, it's just, um, it's a little concerning. It's not like we're getting a known, like, criminal coming in our house for six hours by themselves. Like, it's somebody who's trusted with good reviews and all that, so, like, ultimately it'll probably be fine. But to me, it's just, why wouldn't you just, you know that they don't need to be downstairs. Why are you going to be like, oh, yeah, well, they, they probably won't even go downstairs. Well, if they're stealing stuff, they're definitely going to just go downstairs. Like somebody can say they're not gonna, and then when they're alone in your house for a few hours, they just do it. Poke around, see if there's anything they can take. I don't know. It's mildly concerning. But, should be fine. And ultimately, like, it is a problem that we have, right? Like, we do have an infestation. We need to get somebody coming in and, and cleaning it out, right? So it's like, we can't just say, oh, well, we just won't get an, an exterminator or anything like that. Like, we have to. Um, and the fact that he said that we 
Like, you, you'd think that if they were trying to steal, they wouldn't say that they don't have to go downstairs too, right? Like, you'd think that they... If they were going to steal, they'd be like, Yeah, well, we're going to have to get the whole house and uh, make sure we get all of the... Every little spot. And they try to, like, fool you into thinking that they have to go everywhere so you don't lock the door. Um, but, like, they were just fine with it, so... Very, very highly doubt anything we stolen. But it's still, like... I don't know. It's, it's just a... Uh, not much work to just put a lock on a door. <laughs> I'll pay for the lock. Like it's not it's not a big deal. My sister's like, well there's no way to lock the door. You can't do that. There's no lock on it. I'm like, you just you just you just you put one there. You know, before this house existed, there was no house here. And now there's there's many locks. You, know, you can put a lock where once there was none, you know? Uh, it's something that we can do as a, as, a, as a human, as a people. Uh, whatever. I think this ramble has gone on long enough. I don't know what else to talk about. That's really why I'm kind of going on about it, because I have no other topics to discuss. I was just talking to my mom about this stuff. I went for a break between episodes, get some water. Ah, very good water. And to... Uh, Talked to my mom about getting this uh, exterminator locked out of the basement, and um, it was back back to the like the mental health thing. You know, I can't talk. Okay, we've we've established this. I can't talk. She still asks me questions that aren't like a yes or no answer. You know, and she's like, "How do you expect me to answer this <laughs> if I can't talk?" How do you how do you want me to respond? I can I can nod my head or I can shake my head or I can motion to something, but like you're not gonna understand if you don't ask a yes or no question or at least something that's easily like motioned to, right? If you ask me what do I want to eat, like I can't answer that. That's not a question that I can answer, you know? Unless unless you like lay out the foods in front of me, but that's that's I mean. Even even going into like you know you got to be supportive of your your family who has mental illnesses like that's that's going a step too far um, in in expecting that to happen or even wanting that to happen that's 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 a step too far. But you could say like you know instead of do you want dinner you could be like or what do what do you want for dinner you could be like um, I don't know yes yes or no questions like do you want steak do you want chicken you know and just go down the line until you get a uh, one that uh, I actually say yes to and then boom and it's not really one that happens because they don't actually ask me what I want for dinner um, they just make it and then get upset when I don't like it they get upset at themselves is the thing you don't get upset at me right they'll be like disappointed in themselves for making another dish that I don't like and it'll be like potatoes in like the most boring way possible you know, it'll, it'll just be baked potatoes. Not even, like, baked potatoes, but, like, these little, like, small, tiny circle potatoes that are just baked with, like, a little bit of salt on them. And they're like, oh, you don't like them done this way? I'm like, no, I didn't like them done this way the last, like, hundred times you made them either. They're just, they taste like starch. <laughs> I'm not into it. They're, like, hard and it's like, like, oh, but they're so good. I'm like, yeah, to you, but I've never liked them. I don't know why you keep... Making these ones that I don't like. And then they're like mad at themselves. And I'm like, okay, that's reasonable. But like, just remember that I don't like these next time. It's not that hard. So oftentimes when we eat dinner, um, which really sucks right now because of COVID. But um, oftentimes when they make dinner, I, uh, I'll i eat like part of it. Just because I don't want to waste like food. So whatever I can eat, I'll just, I'll eat it. It's usually, even when I eat it, it's, it's not really that good. Um, but I'll eat it just to not waste food, because otherwise it gets thrown out. I'm like, just, just leave the pork chop out, and I'll just cook my own. Problem solved. But, no. Um, so I'll, I'll make, like, I'll eat, like, their dry pork chop, and then I'll go make, like, a salad or something. Which, right now, during COVID, is kind of annoying, because before COVID, I could just go do all of my grocery shopping and make my own food, which was very nice. 
Um, whereas now, it's it's all on them. And, like, they don't buy enough veggies. Like, the only veggies we get are peppers, uh, which I like, and carrots, which I don't like. And that's, that's, that's it. We get, like, onions. Are those a... Uh, are those a veggie? Or are those a different thing? We get onions. Um, we get uh, mushrooms. I like mushrooms and onions. Those are both good. Um, we get like green onions and whatnot. And that's that's it. Like we don't we don't get other veggies. Like our fridge is full of meats. Like I don't really. I like steak, but ultimately, I also kind of like zucchini. <laughs> you know. I like, um, zucchini's good. Zucchini's really good. It'd be nice to have some zucchini once in a while. Or, uh, broccoli. We don't get broccoli often enough. We get, like, frozen broccoli sometimes. Um, but, like, when we get broccoli, it's, like, a thing, right? Like, it shouldn't be a thing to get broccoli. Like, you should just have broccoli more often. It's, it's good for you. Um... Yeah, it's, it's a little bit frustrating right now because I don't have control over that. I can't really go shopping to get my own food. Um, which has meant that food in general... Oh, boy. Food in general has kind of been a problem during COVID because it's not tasting as good because <laughs> I'm not making it. Um, yeah. And there isn't veggies. It's all meat. It's just meat, meat, meat. Like half the plate is filled with meat and the other half is filled with a different type of meat and I'm like why you don't you don't need this much meat nobody nobody needs this much meat like we had these giant steaks for dinner last night like these huge huge things cooks to medium well of course because that's that's how you cook steaks here um, and uh, just these huge things I'm like okay that's great there were no veggies to go with it I think there was some mushrooms and onions, that was it. It was this big steak with some mushrooms and onions, and that was that was dinner. I'm like, that's not really like a, a good dinner. And it really sucks, because I'm trying to lose weight right now. And when you can't get food that's healthy, it's really hard to lose weight. Because you're hungry all the time, right? Like, if I have proper, like, balanced diet, like, veggies and fiber and all of this. I'm not hungry. You can eat way less and then not be hungry, but when all you're eating is protein and fat, you're hungry. <laughs> and you want to eat more. Because um, you're not, you're not getting, like, all these other, these other nutrients that you need. Um, so to me, anyway, it just feels like I'm more hungry all the time. I like crave like salt or something, um, which really sucks. So I'm really excited for when COVID's over, or at the very least, um, when I'm able to make enough money to uh, like go buy groceries. Because I'd really, really love to be able to start making my own food again and like eating food that I enjoy and uh, eating healthier food as well. Because that's the other thing, right? is the food is just not very healthy. It's it's very... The, the food they make is generally very greasy. Um, I mean, you know, I've, I've been over it. They eat a lot of meat, an, an, an insane amount of meat. Um, and, like, meat is not very good for you, and it's not very good for the environment, and, like, you know, I'm not saying I'm a vegetarian. I am, um, actually. But, like, during COVID, it's hard to get veggies. Uh, and also, my sister's allergic to peanuts and nuts and stuff, so, like, it's even kind of hard to get all my protein and, and nutrients without meats, um, without meat or nuts. Um, so, I want to be a vegetarian, but uh, I also, I'm not really right now because of uh, COVID and then also other reasons. Um, but, you know, it's like, just, you know, whether you're, you're, vegetarian or not people eat too much meat okay like that that is something that should be undeniably true that isn't something that you can debate we we consume too much meat as a society that's not up for debate that that is a fact it's like global warming 
you know, it's like evolution. Oh, goodness gracious, no. Goodness. You know, it is it is a fact that we eat too much meat as a society. I mean, just the sheer amount of space that we use to grow the meats that we eat. You know, it's it's insane. It is an insane amount of space used for the, the sole purpose of meat consumption, just because people think that a 15 ounce steak is uh, fine for dinner. Meanwhile, you should eat like, I don't know, four ounce steak, three ounce steak, not 15 ounces. It's like way over glorified and uh, kind of horrible for the environment. I mean, the amount of cows that we have to have to be able to feed people's stupid steak addiction is producing like 50% of the world's total pollution. Like literally like half of the world's total pollution. Half of what's contributing to global warming as a whole, basically. Half of what's responsible for it is people eating steak. If people just stopped eating cows, like global warming would pretty much be solved. Like that's that's how significant the, the meat consumption is. We'd stop... Uh, real estate would go down too, actually, because we'd have so much more space. Because we use so much land to... to... So it's like billions of cows every year that are being slaughtered. Right? So you think about how much land you need for a billion cows. Okay? And then think about how much land you need to grow all of the food to feed a billion cows. Like how much corn you need for that. I mean, it's just... The logistics behind it is absolutely insane. So whether you're vegetarian or not, um, I think it's extremely important for, for everybody to cut back their their, uh, their meat consumption. Uh, you don't have to be vegetarian necessarily, but uh, you don't have to go, can we live this? I think so, yes. You don't have to go straight into the vegetarian lifestyle, but um, it, is, it is extremely important for, for people to cut back on their meat. And uh, we're definitely not doing that here. It's definitely not something that is being done. Which is uh, sad because... I mean, it, it shows how much we're contributing to global warming. How, how little we care about the environment and, and all that. I mean, real estate costs going up just because we're growing more cows. Like, how much land is being bought and used just for, for cows? I mean species being driven to extinction so we can get more land to farm more cows it's just it's an insane amount of space the whole everything behind everything behind farming cows is uh incredible and it's not even like for me it's not even about the animal cruelty aspect of it because a lot of vegetarians are people who want to be vegetarian want to be vegetarian because they feel like the animals are being treated unfairly i don't personally care <laughs> like and that's that's a problem in itself because we're like desensitized to uh, the whole animal cruelty thing. Like, I, I don't. As long as it's being done, like the cows are bred. We've spent tons and tons of years for breeding them for the sole purpose of being food. And I don't I don't really mind using them for the sake of food. It doesn't really bother me. A lot of people hate that and they want to be a vegetarian because of that. But to me. The part that bothers it is the environmental impact that um, the the cows have on our world because it's insane. Where are you coming from? Okay, I found you. I found you. It's absolutely insane how much is uh, how much cows are doing to make our environment worse. You know, and that's what I have against meat is uh is pretty much exclusively just it's real bad for the environment not that it's bad for the animals because obviously you're killing the animals you're eating the animals that's that's bad for the animal you know it doesn't take a rocket scientist to to figure that one out it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that it's bad for the environment to grow billions of cows um either but i mean it's just we, we could eat we could eat a four ounce steak instead of a ten ounce steak. Okay, that's that's the moral of the story here. That's really the 
the lesson I want to be uh, want to have taken away from this is uh, you, you can eat a, a four ounce steak instead of a instead of a ten ounce steak. You don't you don't need that. You don't you don't actually need that ten ounce steak. It's not actually filling. It's not it's not it's not any bit more better than a than a four ounce steak. You you would have been just as happy with a four ounce steak. The world would have been happier. Your wallet would have been happier. You would have still enjoyed the flavor, the taste, the texture, all of that, and then um, just not really, you know, ruined the environment and uh, contributed to global warming and all of, uh, all of this other really bad stuff. Oh, I don't really want to die right at the end. Thank you! That'll do her! I mean, moral of the story is don't eat a cow for breakfast. Eat like a quarter of a cow, you know? Just cut it back a little. We eat too many cows. Probably. Uh, anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Remember to like the video. If you like it, subscribe. If you want to see more, comment if you have anything to say. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.